Now we're going to look at PowerShell remoting or WinRM and why it fails in a lot of circumstances because of SPNs. So what we've done here is just go out and do a PowerShell uh, command and ask it for an IP config of a remote machine and what it's done is tell us that the Kerberos is broken or the remote machine is not responding. So today we're going to look at the two options to fix this and before we get into each one I just want to quickly explain why this happened. So if we do it and a quick look at the SPNs we'll see that there's an SPN that exists and that the SPN is actually registered to a service account and we can then check the service account and see which SPNs are registered to that account and that also gives us some indication of how many other machines may or may not have exactly the same problem so we're just going to quickly get the output for that in this case I know it's already going to be just that one but I'll explain to you why that's useful um, because of depending on how you fix this you might actually need a list of those SPNs now without further ado let's get into the fixing part of this so option one you can fix WinRM using SPN now what this means is um, generally WinRM runs under the local service account and when you have an SPN set up for let's say IIS or whatever on a domain account the result is that WinRM can't be got to with the local account and therefore it breaks the Kerberos chain authentication. So one possible fix to this is to create a new SPN registered to the local machine but only on the WinRM port. Now you might want to check whether you're using the default port or not beforehand. In this case I am, so I've set it to port 5985, uh, which is the default WinRM port. The downside to this is that when you're creating a new PowerShell session, what you'll need to do is register the option, which is the first one here with the include in SPN, before opening the session up. So now that I've got the session option set up I create a new session and then finally I'm calling the command and what we should see in a moment is the output of that command now this is one possible fix the solution here relies on each and every machine having the same set um, of SPNs or similar set of SPNs aka the WinRM port being registered on all of them otherwise the output would be different for those that do and those that don't and that would be problematic so option two option two is very similar to option one but with the reverse instead of trying to fix uh, the problem by adding an SPN for WinRM what we're going to do is remove the SPN that's blocking WinRM so in this case what we're going to do is we're going to go back and we're going to quickly list our SPN and then what we're going to do is remove the SPN that exists there. Now you're probably thinking hey he's crazy he's removing it. Um, well we are going to create a new one so relax. Um, what we're going to do is set it but instead of setting it at a server level where every inbound connection is automatically going to be registered to that connection on a domain account we're going to specifically tell it hey I only want port 80 now this will allow my website to run and if I'm running SSL obviously I'd also need to set uh, port 443 or any other custom port that I'm using so this is the downside to it is you would need potentially more SPNs the more ports that you're using advantage different websites could use different domain accounts to run their application pools so there is actually an upside to it the result is that since now WinRM is happily running on a port with a local machine whilst the IIS is running on a port 80 and not responding to anything else we can continue to use WinRM and ultimately PowerShell remoting perfectly normally as if there was no SPN there. Now if you did like this video don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button for more content in future.